Hello everyone, Heather Palapal here. This is the full video of me attempting to wrap two stones together in one pendant for the first time. I'm still in the early stages of learning how to wire wrap stones. I'm so thankful for tutorials on YouTube and learning how to do this from people who have done it much longer than I have. As I mentioned in an earlier video, I've always had an attraction to stones. So learning to wrap them and sell them in my business only makes sense. So, so far you've seen me cut three strips of wire the same length to wrap around the stone and even them out, straighten them out. And now you see me using a thinner wire to wrap around them to kind of weave them together. This seems to be a pretty standard starting point for wire wrappers. There's different ways you can wrap this wire around to hold all these strands together. Um, the way you're seeing me do here is my first time attempting a specific weave pattern so that it makes a cool, you know, shape when it's done. And of course, once they're woven together, the trick is to somehow get these wires to wrap around the stone. In previous attempts, I had an issue with the stone keep falling out or issues happening. So I did see one tutorial where the guy used tape to kind of tape it to the wires so you can get it just the way you want it to be. And that seems to work well for me. After establishing how these are wrapping around and where they're gonna meet at the top, then I take that thinner wire again and I wrap it around the top part to kind of hold all the wires together. At this point, I was still struggling pretty bad with, you know, getting that little wire to wrap around, getting it to wrap where I wanted it to wrap, you know, cause those wires kind of get themselves tangled with each other. And I haven't quite mastered getting them to really behave the way I need them to. But eventually I get it and you start by wrapping it around one of them three times to kind of, I don't know, I guess, tie it on there it, it works I, I don't understand and then you wrap them around all of them and that establishes you know where they're kind of going to connect at the top there when people do tutorial videos of this somehow they have all these wires kind of wrapped you know lined up perfectly wrapped perfectly um, I'm not quite there yet so I'm using a lot of kind of twisting and turning and using my pliers to kind of make it look as even as possible. Now this is the part where I was deciding, you know, whether or not I should do the next step with the stone in or out, but obviously I took it out. Um, and now I've decided to kind of get the, I think the back wire, I think I started the back wire, uh, get the back wire kind of stuck out a little bit to hold the stone in because before I finalize that top part winding, I want to get that second stone in there. Um, I'm really glad I did this because uh, where I'd done that wrapping at the top <laughs> was too low. Uh, the stone just, that second stone just would not, would not fit. I tried different angles, I turned it around, you, you see me. Um, and in the end, it just, it doesn't fit. I tried kind of widening the wires to see if it would go in that way and it popped out <laughs> uh, so yeah this is the part where I decided you know what I need to pull up those wires that I wrapped I need more room there to fit that second stone in there and you know did a little more kind of finessing with those wires and ultimately <laughs> after a little more effort I did get it to fit and you know once it was in there I was able to work with it but yeah there was one point where it actually popped out and and I had to actually stop the video and find it and get it in there but you know once I got it in there I moved those wires around to make sure it was really you know locked in and good to go I have noticed that this stage you know I have all these tools but for some reason my fingernail on my finger does the best job of separating those wires and getting them you know in the positions that I want them to be I know the tools could help me um, but maybe I'm just not that good with them yet so I really took my time on this part I wanted these wires to kind of sit around both stones in a way where it wasn't hiding the stones um, 
but at the same time it kept them stable. So once I got that done, I kind of folded back the sides um, that I'll be using to wind and decorate with. And now I'm winding, for the first time I'm doing a weave winding around what they call the bale, which is the part that kind of curves around that you put the chain through. I wasn't actually able to wind it as, as far as I wanted to. Um, I don't know if it's because I was overworking it. I don't know what I might have been doing wrong. Um, but a, a little down from where I wanted it to end, the wire actually broke on me. Uh, I'm still f trying to fully figure out why that happened, um, but I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. But after the wire did break, um, I realize it was high enough so that when you're looking at the pendant from the front when we wrap it down that it um, it looks fine it, it's not a big deal so once I got the wire wrapped around these um, bale wires uh, the next step is to you know curve it backwards on itself to make that loop again those tutorial videos on YouTube make this step look really really easy um, but <laughs> so far I've had a few failures on this part so you'll see me kind of twisting things around to get the clearances I want getting the tool um, that hopefully will do what I want it to do um, but I do kind of you know they do one quick twist and they're done um, I did quite a few to kind of get it in the shape I wanted it to be and I'm actually happy with this one um, this is the first one I've done so far that I'm content with minus the weave not going back as far as I wanted it to. So this is the part where I'm able to use that tail end of that thinner wire to wrap around and hold it down in the spot where I put it once I was happy with where it went. And you know, that part's relatively easy. Uh, what I'm still struggling with as well, you'll see me here, is getting the end of the wire to tuck, it's supposed to tuck inward so it doesn't stab people when they wear it. But I got it in and then I started using the rest of the wires to kind of wrap around and decorate it. I am feeling a lot more confident now with this step. Um, when I first did it, it really stressed me out. But I'm getting the hang of kind of using my fingers, using my thumb, being gentle. Um, I did mess up there, but I was actually able to correct it. Now what I've learned from the tutorial videos I've been watching on these um, is that they, even they do this very organically. There's a pattern you're following in the tutorial, but they will show other ones they've done and they're all different. So instead of following a tutorial video on this one, I decided to just run with it and be organic with it and just see what looked good and see uh, where I could go with it. I did one little twist at the top of the veil like I'd seen in another video. And then I just started wrapping them around one at a time. I like the idea of them kind of crisscrossing over each other, um, interacting with each other so that in the end it felt a lot more cohesive. And after doing the swirls, I'm really happy with how everything laid out. So the next step is what I struggle with the most and I um, stressed out about it so much. This is actually the following day I slept on it. But I finally got myself motivated and sat down and told myself, you know, do your best, see how it goes. So all those little swirls and things you saw need to be kind of tied down. So once again, I'm using that thinner wire and I'm looping it and looping it around to kind of tie everything down. In the tutorial videos, they would do, you know, the triple wind around the first wire before they picked up the second one they're tying down. And then they would do another triple wind around that wire again to finish it off. Now the way I tend to think is how could I do this in an easier way because I'm already struggling with getting that wire to wrap to begin with. So here you're seeing me start on the back side to do my little experiment and I, I'm hoping that instead of just doing that for each thing I want to wind, I can continue the wind all the way down because there were I think three or four different things I wanted to wind back there and I didn't want to have to keep cutting it and tucking in the wires and cutting it again and tucking in the wires. So I was hopeful I could just continue to carry the same wire down to hold down each little wind that I want to hold down. But you could see that despite me speeding this up five times how long it actually took me, it, it took a while. It, just trying to get that wire to go in between the wires and 
it's just, it's not easy. It's not easy. So by the time I got down to the bottom, to the third or fourth thing, I was trying to wind down there. And I was hopeful that I could wrap it back up the other side and really just get everything tied down in one fell swoop. The wire ended up breaking like it did on the bale. Now, I'm a very analytical person, I'm a perfectionist, and when things don't go my way, I need to figure out why. So after that wire broke, I took a break, and I took a deep breath, and I really tried to think it through. And I remembered one of the tutorial videos I'd watched, the girl wasn't cutting this thin wire with a, um, a wire cutter she was actually spinning it a couple times and it was snapping and that's when I realized when I'm doing these winds and struggling with it I'm not paying attention to the fact that it's kind of twisting as I go you can see the light reflecting off of it how it's all kinked so I realized what I think is happening is after a certain number of winds and struggles it's getting kinked and twisted enough that when I go to pull on it it just snaps So I realize I need to be more gentle with this wire and also I need to figure out how to wind it without it getting twisted so it won't snap again. So I used my little straightening tool, the thing with the white ends on it, and that's kind of what it's for. So I tried it that way. I still struggle sometimes with getting the wire to go underneath and, and wrap it around, but I'm now taking this step when I see the wire starting to get a little twisted or kinked up to use um, that straightening uh, tool. I think that's what it's called. And here I'm trying to kind of tighten it against the wire without breaking it with the, the pliers. But yeah, as soon as I saw it get kinked, I used the tool to straighten it. And I did notice it was, it was much easier to work with. I don't remember if any of the tutorials mentioned that. Um, maybe they did and I, I just didn't notice, um, but maybe I learned a new thing today. And I'll tell you what, by the end of making this pendant, I do feel much more confident working with this wire wrapping that I dreaded and had to sleep on last night. It really is true that practice makes perfect, um, but it's easy to say, not as easy to do. As an artist in my lifetime, I've had to do a lot of practice and make a lot of failures to be as skilled as I am today as an artist. And people love to be amazed and awestruck by the work that I can get done now, but they weren't there for all the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to get to this point. I'm inherently a very patient person and I'm also a very driven person. So it doesn't matter if it's my first failure or my 50 millionth failure, I'm still not gonna stop trying until I get it. And when people tell me I can't do something, <laughs> that's even more drive to do it for me. I am now on a mission to prove them wrong when they tell me I can't do it. I had an art teacher in high school tell me I was a horrible artist, I should quit her class and I should never do art again. That was in my junior year when I was trying to decide whether I wanted to be a musician or an artist. One would ultimately be my hobby and the other would ultimately be my career, but I loved them both equally. But once that teacher told me that I couldn't be an artist, <laughs> that, that cemented it for me. I was going to art school. I remember my goal at that point in time was I'm going to become the most amazing artist. I'm going to open my own gallery just so that the day she comes walking in, I can tell her to leave that she is not welcome. That has been part of my drive to get to where I am now. Now, obviously, I'm much more mature now in my 40th year than I was in high school. Um, if she were to walk in, I, I would probably welcome her, but honestly, I can't picture her face in my head, so she very well could have come in my gallery over the last 10 years, and I may not have recognized her. But even though the, the face hasn't stuck in my head, her words have, and you know, words are strong. And the way she made me feel that day has stuck with me ever since. 
so you're watching me learning. This is me learning a new skill. This is me struggling. This is me trying different things until I get it the way it works for me. So even though maybe the way I'm doing it isn't the way others do it, doesn't make it wrong. There's plenty of things that I do that don't seem quite right or that people want to tell me I'm doing wrong. But in the end, it's about the results. It's about me enjoying what I'm doing, me not trying to live to other people's expectations, and me making something awesome. I create things in the mindset that someone will cherish it for their whole lives to the point where they're going to leave it as an heirloom to their offspring. And that this item right here, for all I know, could be someone's prized possession in 200 years. And I'm always thinking about that. I want someone to look at this 200 years from now and wonder. I especially would love it if I could get to a point in my life where 200 years from now, someone looks at it and says, this is a genuine Heather Palapal artifact. It'll be in an auction somewhere and people will bid exorbitant amounts of money on it because, you know, I'm that awesome. But today I'm me. Most of the world doesn't even know I exist, which is fine. And I enjoy what I am doing right now. My blood, sweat, and tears are going into learning a new skill. And in the end, it's going to be amazing and people are going to love it. I know they're going to love it. And as a spiritual person, I, I like to imagine that each you know, item I create has a little piece of me in it, a little piece of my energy or soul, however you want to look at it, and that this will, you know, live beyond my body. So here I am finishing up, tying down all the loose ends, making sure everything's stable, making sure anyone wearing it in the future isn't going to get stabbed by a wire somewhere. Also considering it maybe getting caught on an item of clothing. We don't want to damage the clothing, nor do we want to damage this. So, you know, it's important that I make sure there aren't any loose ends. And this is another skill I'm working on, getting everything to line up and look good and getting those ends tucked in. I'm still struggling with a little bit, but I'm, I'm getting better. I'm just happy to see the improvement in my skill over just picking this up about a month ago. I mean, I love that I'm a fast learner and I love that I can be proud of even my early pieces when I'm still not confident with what I'm doing. Now, obviously as a new learner and you know, still working on my skills, this one being an experiment, there's a lot of wonky things with it. It is far from perfect. So this will be staying in my own collection and I will be you know, improving my skills and putting things for sale that I feel are up to my standard that I sell in my gallery that you know someone isn't gonna look at and think the three-year-old did it. And that's why for this experiment, I used two stones that I personally am in love with, that I personally wanted to wear on my person and, you know, utilize the ability to learn new skills to make it into a pendant that I can wear for myself. So you won't be finding this in the store. You won't be able to purchase this particular piece, but I hope that you enjoy watching me, uh, listening to, you know, my mindset and my process and why I do what I do. I did make quite a pile of wrapped quartz that um, I think are up to standard for sale that I will be posting on the website in the coming days. And then I'll do a big announcement to let everyone know they're up for sale. And hopefully I get a lot of buyers and I can fund more exports into this. And I want to do, you know, more precious stones as I go if people enjoy how I'm doing this. So after finishing the wire wrapping, cutting the chain, getting all the ends, I am cutting chains to uh, sizes myself and I am attaching the clasps and things myself. So that means in the future, if you want to order a custom piece, I can make the chain as long as you want. I can wrap whatever stone you want. I think that would be super fun. I'm hopeful people will want that. So thank you for getting this far in such a long video. I really do appreciate your time and I hope you enjoy what I did here in my learning of wire wrapping. 
please like, subscribe, and follow if you want to see more.